I'm going to call the meeting to order at 401. Board members present, Dennis O'Connell, Arlene Diaz, staff, Teresa, and Gil Mata. And we are discussing plans. Oh, and actually Billy Boyle from uh, commission is on as well. Plans to open. Um, primary Cove or what kind of what the plan is going to be. So is Diane on the call as well or just Billy? <laughs> Was invited. Uh, I do not see her on the call. She she does have the um, the invite, so she may have just been held up with school, possibly. Okay. All right. So, um, Billy, I guess we should talk. Have you talk first about what kind of plans you have, or what the rec commission wants to do um, about the cove for the summer? Uh, well, looking at it, and and Gil and I, you know, met last week to check out the space and everything and and I guess the, the thing is um because of the fencing you know it's considered a, a contained space so I guess actually going back to um order number 13 from Governor Baker because of it being an enclosed space we can only have it says 10 or few people at a time which means if that's the case and that includes staff um we're not gonna we're not gonna be able to to fund it properly. Okay, but there to. was an executive What's I'm that? Sorry. There was an there was an executive order dated June the fourth that was for coastal and inland beaches in phase two. So did you guys use that or did you use the one that was for outdoor recreation? Well, in looking at both, obviously the one for coastal beaches does talk about the the beach towels and the 12 foot rule which i initially thought was the case but again when you read order number 13 and you look at that space with it being fenced in i, I see exactly where uh Asia Navato's talking about that it's if it's considered a confined space then we have to adhere to the 10 people and not the you know the towel distancing rule um okay even but in the case with the amount of passes that we would have to sell because we obviously won't be allowed to sell season passes we can't do swim lessons yeah. or anything so that right there is about seventeen thousand dollars of last year's budget that we aren't going to have coming in um so we have to essentially double our day pass sales from last year is what we would have to do okay so, i mean from from a safety standpoint i i it, it's not a question of we can follow the guidelines and all that. It's it's not a question of that. It, it now comes down to, you know, fiscal responsibility as well. And, you know, in order to staff the beach properly and, you know, adhere to these guidelines, it's it looks as if we would lose anywhere between probably a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars a week. Did you do the numbers to see what it would cost to pay the two staff during that time? Yep, I have it right here. So what is it? What is it per day for set for the staff? Because you'd have two lifeguards, right? It would be two lifeguards, a gatekeeper, and then the beach director position, which ends up being roughly, you know, half the time. We we have uh, about forty nine hours a week that we're open. And I believe the beach director is usually there for at least half the time. So based on that, weekly it's just over $2,500. It amounts to a little over $365 a day, uh, which equates to 73 beach passes at five bucks a pop. A week. Is that what you're saying? No, we, we would have to do 73 passes a day. Um, for the week, it, it would be just under, we'd have to do about 550 passes a week to so are you saying each person pays five dollars yeah so with I'm with each person and actually and based on so based on the fact that we won't be able to handle money and we would have to do it online right you wouldn't have a credit card a transaction paper, fee that may end up getting passed on to the consumer which would mean their five dollar beach pass is going to be probably eight or nine bucks 
we're only going to see five of that, but then the rest of it goes to the credit card company. If, if you use that as a venue to, to do your package. Well, we have, right that, now we're being told we can't handle cash. Okay, and there's no, have you looked into any other means of having people pay? Uh, well, we, we have to go through the municipal, but right now we have Unibank. So we would have to use somebody like that. We're not allowed to do Square. And so based on that, if we had a reservation system and pay through that, um, yeah, it's still, you, you can't get around the transaction fees. Credit card companies have their hand in everything. Um, and and I, I didn't get, you said, so there's the beach director, two lifeguards. And a gatekeeper. gatekeeper and, and a gatekeeper. Would you still need a gatekeeper if they're not collecting tickets? Well, yeah, because if or, we're going to have to, if we're going to have to maintain social distance protocol and not having too many people on the beach at a time, we're going to need a lead person at the gate that's managing the entrance to it. Because we're also going to have some sort of, you know, whether it's pass system or somebody has to bring a reservation ticket, we're going to need somebody at the point of contact at the gate to maintain the, the flow at the beach. Okay. Now, I, you were talking about um, order 13, which I don't have in front of me. Oh, you don't happen to know when that came out. Came out. Um, well, I don't know it's after March 13th because it has whereas March 10th, March 11th, March 19th. So I'm going to say it came out probably around March 19th or somewhere thereafter because that's looks like the last. I'm sorry, or as of March okay. 22nd. So it's right around the end of March. It doesn't have the date right on it. All right, I would. I'm sorry. Yeah, the I would think of March. that. Twenty-third of March. So. The one that came out on June 4th, which is the safety standards for coastal and inland beaches for phase two. Did you look at that? I, I did. And again, I, I'm looking at that too as beaches, again, like Duxbury and Scusset and everything where people do have the ability to spread out. Not a fenced in, you know, pond front beach where again, people are contained within the, the fence. So I, I did read that, and, and initially I was under the impression that we could adhere to that. But again, I wasn't as familiar with Order 13. So based on looking at those two, I think it's more feasible that 13 applies because, again, the people at the beach are kind of confined and fenced into that area. It's the same with the, yeah, the swimming, I actually, like you have to stay between the docks. I actually sent something to the state. I haven't gotten an answer back yet as to whether or not they would consider that beach confined because there are ways to get in there. I mean, there is a gate, there's a, there's a fence there, but I, it's open. I don't know that confined fits that space, but I haven't heard back from them, so I don't know. Okay. I would well, think yeah, yeah, that. I'm going based off. Um, Yeah, I know that uh, I know that I believe Diane sent out some correspondence as well. Um, even that being said, if we're allowed to even go to 20 people, we still have to be able to turn the beach over every hour and 45 minutes to get to the, the daily number that we need to break even. Keep the cove. Okay. Uh, I mean, it just so, it breaks down that last year without like, any any government protocol and not having to worry about, um, you know, beach population, we still only, we did 2,300 day passes. We have to more than double that for this season to break even. So I just, looking at the math, I don't see how we're going to be able to, when we're not in a normal season, I'm worried that we're going to spend way too much money to not get much of a return. Okay. And what did the rec commission, what was their recommendation? Um, well, right now, they, 
from their conversation, they want to make sure that it financially makes sense to do it. I mean, I'll certainly get more okay. of their input, but I, I think when you put it up against public safety and then, you know, the math of it, it makes a very hard argument to open the cove knowing that we're going to be losing money every week. Oh, definitely. You would have to figure out, right, you'd have to figure out financially what you're yeah, doing I mean, doesn't make sense. It, it would not make sense to um, open it if you know you're, you're going to be losing money. That makes no sense. Um, yeah, but it's I mean, not going to stop people from going there. Well, but again, it's like if you use the argument, well, if people are going to be there anyway, just open it. And it still means that if we open it, we have to spend close to $30,000. We don't open it and we've got all the signage there. I mean, it's unfortunate that people won't respect the signage, but again, that's at that point in time, it's not our call anymore. If we make the decision to not open the beach, then it's incumbent on people to follow the rules and respect that they're not supposed to trespass. Okay, and what happens if somebody does trespass and what happens, what's our liability? Town's liability. Really my understanding is there is no liability with all the signage that we have posted and now we have more down there too saying beach clothes no swimming no trespassing um that gives more of an enforcement to uh hansen pd to evict people off the beach if if they're there unlawfully but they've been there every day right oh hi arlene hi bill hi everybody hi. Hi. Um, yeah, they have been there every day, but the police, when they're called, have said that they do a couple of drive-bys daily, but there's no way they're going to post anybody down there to keep them off the beach. There's just no way. Yeah, no, I mean, and, and to get a police detail down there would be close to probably 500 bucks a day. So, you know, we right, obviously right. wouldn't and be if, able to afford that either. And if it's closed, you're not going to be able to. I, uh, Diane, the part that you missed is I was asking Bill, uh, Billy about how many staff you're going to have and what the cost is going to be in terms of do you have the space. He, I'm going to have to look at 13 because I would think the memorandum that came out June 4th would be the one that would cover um, the beach. And I did... Um, send a message to the state yesterday, and I've not heard back from them about inland beaches and the size, whether that would be considered broken. I'm mm -hmm. sorry? I haven't heard back from them either. Right. Can I break in here a minute? Okay, just yep, uh, go ahead. Show a model here. On Governor's Order number 38, uh, just came out not that long ago, confirmed gatherings that bring together more than 10, pe 10 persons in close physical proximity in any confined indoor or outdoor space remain prohibited throughout the Commonwealth. But they wouldn't be in close, they would, they would have to be 12 feet between the spots where they're sitting. So they're not in close proximity. But it's still a confined space by the technicality that it is all fenced in. It's Well, yeah, the I, definition I of property is to keep people in or keep people out. So, and I think the gate is only what seven feet wide there. So I think you know, it, it I think keep it, people um, out. Can't hear you, Joe. Sorry. Oh, what did you say? I just said you know between the, I the gate, uh, I don't think you can maintain you know proper social distancing because of the confinement. The fence goes into the water, so I think you think you're creating a liability for us, everybody there. How are people getting in there now? People get okay. in by walking around the fence um, over by the side toward the trail that leads all along the pond by the boathouse behind the main lodge. So there's like so a walking trail. And that's public access. And I believe the police at one point said that it was fine to walk around there because it's publicly opened. But what I was waiting for from the government 
website email that I sent was a definite determination if we are considered an enclosed space, even though it's outdoors. I, I want to know, like, are we different than a tent outdoors, which is what a lot of the restaurants are doing, even though it's outdoors, it's an enclosed tent. I'm not sure that the beach is under that same guise as that kind of situation. So I asked for clarification for it. Um, I haven't heard back yet. And I am going to bring up at the Board of Selectmen meeting tonight um, that that really is the issue. Do we have more control over the beach by opening it or by keeping it closed? And I'm fine either way, but I just want the Board of Selectmen to have the final say knowing what the current situation is down there, that people are on it every day um, as the weather gets warmer and school is officially out, more people will be on it every day and they will be actively swimming and there will be no lifeguards. And I know we're not liable. Um, Arlene, did you talk to town council regarding any of this? No, no. I just sent the message to the state because I wanted to figure out if we were um, considered enclosed first. But I think town council will be at the selections meeting. Okay. So town council may have a better, um, you know, perspective on what the best way to go with this is because to, and again, I know we have to think of our finances and I know we have to take into account everything that the rules and the phases are, you know, putting in place but I really think it makes sense to get better clarification because I certainly don't think that a chain link fence enclosure counts as the same as, you know, a big tent where there are walls and such. And I think that that's why um, outdoor seating at restaurants was part of phase one rather than phase two was because it was outdoors with no walls. And I'm just wondering about that. Okay, the governor's regulation on fences, okay? If a tent is set up and it has walls on it, it is a confined space. If they take the walls down, it is no longer a confined space. So you have to view the chain link as the same way. You know, Why? Find the people in there. But I, a chain link fence is a breathable see-through apparatus. I mean, it's not, um, it doesn't prohibit air from flowing, which is what it the- is Sorry, it is confining the people there. If someone wants to try to practice social distancing, they'd have to climb over the fence if they felt uncomfortable being in the area with so many people, there's no way for them to leave other than pass other people going out the gate. Okay, but- so in a tent, there would be no way for them to, I'm, I'm confused. I'd really like better. I would, I would like better clarification on that myself. I, I'm just not, I just want to know the, the reasoning. I, I mean, if you're in a tent and you want to practice social distancing. Well, Diane, they can't, it's Teresa. Right now during phase two, if you're using a tent, the tent cannot have sides. Okay. So it has to be, you know, just, you can have a tent with sides, but the sides have to be rolled up. They cannot be down. Okay. Because then it's considered confined. Okay. So, so the fence is pretty much the same thing. I understand what you're saying, that it's open, but the, the um, tent has to be open as well. So I'm wondering if we have an, act, an entrance point and an exit point, because we do have two gates on the fence if that might help the situation at all i I, do, I still see the fact that you're limited to 10 people i mean you look at all the governor's orders i mean there's 38 there's 38 orders so far the governor sent down and he has not increased the social gathering of you know more than 10 people okay 
Well, I mean, you know, if that's what you want well, to go with. It, it says no group larger than 10 people. On the coastal and inland beaches, it says no group larger than 10, which right, to me Right, but if, is, it's a confined, if it's a confined space, it's a group no larger than 10. That's the that's the big thing. And I, too, sent an email to the state and have not heard back. Not heard back? Nope. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah. I'm not surprised. I'm sure, sure there's... The, 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 if it's a confined space, no more than 10 people. That's the current guidance. So if the fence makes it a confined space, it's no more than 10 people. Okay. Well, I mean, hey, I'm... Listen, if that's what the governor and everybody agrees on and that is what the board of selectmen agree on i'm fine with it you know obviously it's something that i would have to live with even if i wasn't fine with it so i don't have a problem with it what i do want us to do though is to have a plan in place for phase three which is happening by the beginning of july i believe correct yeah uh, june 29th if it go if everything goes according to plan okay so i'm gonna be optimistic and say that everything goes according to plan and i'm gonna say what is our plan for that do we know where those guidelines might be leading no because they haven't released them and they probably won't so if it starts the 29th they probably won't release the guidance for that till like 26. okay that's that's the way it has been going right I get it. Yeah. Maybe yeah, a couple days before up. that, but Gil and Teresa, usually right before. Them, do you see them lifting the restrictions on gathering size or say even tripling or quadrupling it? No, I don't I don't see that at all. You know, he might if he increases anything, uh, you know, like the restaurants and uh, if they do go to uh, indoor dining, uh, it appears it'll be like a 40%. Uh, of capacity so I mean I've got uh, I've given you most of the guidances that we have here like I say there's over 39 orders now yeah. and 20 plus guidances that he has in effect uh, I think I've given you pretty much everything that uh, applies to the cove or even the camp so I think uh, you know it's a lot of it's not uh, interpretation it's all written down black and white right. and also that all you need all you need in that cove is just one person to say, you know, we, we're not practicing social distancing and I don't feel safe. And they report it and that's going to be a problem. So, and Gil, question on that. So I know that it says it, if that happens, it says either criminal charges or a fine of $300 per violation. So would that mean that if, say it was 10 people or whatever, and we have 15 there, does that mean that those five people are each considered a violation of that rule and that we'd be on the hook for 1500 bucks? Is that how it works or? Okay, for our experience that we have experienced so far in here in, in the Board of Health Office, someone complains they don't feel safe because of social distancing. They send the report the Board of Health agent has to do a report, uh, you know, investigate what took place and document what took place. And in turn, you know, uh, send the report or reports to the Department of Labor and uh, Services, Workforce Services, which they assign an investigator. And I work with the investigator. They'll make a determination. As far as I see, um, no one's been fined yet. And I don't think they've been finding unless it's you know, blatantly ignored, but that's, you know, that's the situation that could happen. Okay. Thank you. That was my next question. And trust me, people are sitting around and people are going to want to use the code. And I know that people are going to complain. So this is uh, my advice that I think it will take place. Well, I'm just going to write, anybody I'm just going to put on a sign that if they have any complaints to contact the board of health. Uh, that would be that would be the next I, action, I believe. I have a they question. Can, Has anybody been the down there? Go straight to you guys. Right. 
Diane, I have a question. Sure. Has has anybody gone down there and seen how many people are on the beach and if they're maintaining social distance? Yes, I have been walking down there frequently a few times a week. Um, I actually asked some boys to that they maybe suggested they shouldn't be on there. You know, I asked them, I said, you know, there's no trespassing signs here. And, you know, they were older and they said, oh, well, call the police on us, you know, and I'm not going to because the police have other things to do. They And they can get somebody off and five minutes later, they can go back on. So, right. you know, they just, ho he just hopped the gate fence right in front of me. Like, you know, not a problem. And the families with little kids just go around the side. So I've seen anywhere from just a few people to about 22. Were they socially distancing? No, they're families and they're friends. Okay, but what you think? Okay. No, they're not social distancing. They're on the piers fishing and they're, you know, I mean, no, they're not social distancing. I mean, I didn't go out there with a measuring tape or anything, but, <laughs> you know, I mean, from what I saw, yeah, they, did, it look, did it look like organized groups 12 feet apart from each other? No. No. Uh, I'll get Are back in on this. I think that uh, I think it's going to be very hard to manage it, and uh, it would probably cost you quite a bit to do it. And then when uh, nobody says I'm not leaving, you know, then you're going to have an issue. Then the police will have to get involved. So I think you know, careful uh, consideration on what you people decide you want to do. Uh, of course, the police could get involved, but again, it, it doesn't make financial sense to post a police officer at the cove when when we're in this current budget situation that's just ludicrous and as it stands now we don't have any control over what's going on down there so that's exactly the point i would like to bring up tonight at the board of selectmen meeting and diane maybe you can um speak with the town administrator and ask if he could ask the police to make more frequent visits to the cove. Sure. I mean, I mean, that know, would be one idea. Yeah. And then you're not paying a, 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 an officer a detail, you know? It, sure. It doesn't hurt to ask. And I mean, I'm sure they're driving by there a million times a day. Hanson's not that big. Well, I, I'm kind they of could surprised. Bring in they, when they're driving down 58. They said they do um, two or three times in the eight hour shift. Yeah, I usually see them twice, at least when I'm here at the office. So I've, I've seen them uh, do one round already. I stepped up for lunch, so it's possible they'd done another round, but yeah, they're usually up here at least, at least two to three times minimum a day. In an eight hour shift. Right. Yeah. So and if did, you do, do they you know, make seven to three, three to 11. Do they make people leave? I've never witnessed that. Yeah, I've that. seen them kick people off. You yes, they will make people leave. Yep, my, my son said he's witnessed it. Okay. You know, you have to realize the police are also an arm of the Board of Health, and they've uh, committed to the Department of Public Health that they will assist the Board of Health in any way they can. And they are part of the emergency management of a town, you get to still realize we're in a state of emergency. So they are part of the emergency management and they're more than well cooperative with what we want to do and what we have to do. Okay, so I guess we'll just talk to the Board of Selectmen today, wait for any clarification that we may or may not receive and let you know Gil and the Board of Health here and the Board of Selectmen make the final call and we will have a plan in place for whether we are to open or whether we are to stay closed or whether the guidelines in phase three are changed. We have to be prepared. Diane, I, have, I just I want to know if you've done the numbers in terms of what you would have to do to make it 
at least break even. Okay, well, I'm gonna say this. Bill has done the numbers going by the current guidelines that Gil has interpreted and it would not be financially um, feasible for us to open the cove given those guidelines. Should the guidelines change or should the um, category of the cove change to where it's an inland beach and not an enclosed space, then we the numbers definitely would change and we would change the ticket prices on the day pass to something probably like $20 per family with booking online and so that there's no money exchange and um, having two to three hour shifts. And at that point, then yes, it could become financially feasible to where we would break even or possibly even make money. Okay. But we have to wait for the interpretation of the guidelines. I would think at the end of the month, the gathering size, I can't imagine it's going to still stay, stay at 10. I, I think that's a little hard, but we'll see. <clears throat> well, I guess all we can do is wait, but then really, I think the more important piece of this is getting the correct designation for what the cove actually is, whether it is considered right. an enclosed space or a inland beach or whatever. Right. If we ever hear back from the state. Right, so maybe John, being in the town manager, could get um, more clarification on that from somebody. I don't know, because um, basically what we're all doing is just reading what is put forth online and right. interpreting it, you know, as such. So individually, right? No, well, what I'm going by is the governor's orders that I get constantly, and I have to adhere to, and. The governor's orders are pretty much black and white, and uh, there's no deviation. And then these guidelines and the orders, you can't make them, uh, you can't increase the requirements of them, and you can't make them any lenient. So it's very cut and dry here. Okay. Well, so, so well you're not sorry, Diane. You're no, not you considering. Can't... No, I was going to ask if Jill doesn't consider the standards for inland beaches to apply to Cranberry Cove. I'm sorry, are you speaking to me or Gil or who are you? I'm no, sorry. No, I was asking Gil. Oh, I was okay. asking Gil. You know, I have to go by, um, even if you do like a 12 foot thing there, I just, I don't see it happening there. I mean, I'll, I'll, I mean I'm going to get an, uh, an answer from the state faster than you. I will do it right now, I'll, you know, get a hold of the state and uh, I'll get a hold of the Department of Labor and Safety Standards and, you know, check with him. No, I my, That's great. Is, my question was, are you not considering the cold um, to be under the standard for coastal and inland beaches? That was my question. That right now, I don't. Okay. Well, maybe we could, um, if you, well, you being the health agent, I'm sure they'd take your phone call or answer your email rather than any of the rest of us. So maybe if they could send an email, we could, you know, then you could send it to us or something clarifying the designation of the cove. Right. I mean, they can certainly look at the cove online through the Camp Kiwani website or even an overhead Google map. To see under what, got, wonder, what category it falls under. Right. <clears throat> Yeah, because I'm not, like I said, I didn't get an answer, and I figured calling wasn't going to be any more fruitful. I certainly don't want to put put on hold for all that time, but, I mean, if, if I thought they didn't, I'll certainly try. Right. We had something else to do. Okay. Um, so what we were going to talk, were we talking about... The camp as well, and the cove is a separate issue. So, I, I believe the cove is a separate issue. Is that what everybody else is going by? 
because I think we were going to talk about both. So the Board of Selectmen hasn't opened up Kiwani yet, right? Correct. Okay. And I don't know that there's anything that would involve the Board of Health with you opening Kiwani. Oh, well, opening, if they were to open the lodge, be. weddings would be a gathering of more than 10, which... Obviously. Yeah, but I think... I don't know if you have any weddings coming up. I don't think uh, you do. We've got a lot of ones that we're scheduling. But... Well, yeah. Yeah. The Maybe ones that were scheduled. I'm sorry. No, I said you had ones that were scheduled, but they've canceled. Um, we've had most of them rescheduled to next year. We have had a handful that aren't able to reschedule, so they had to cancel. Okay. Okay, but as far as opening the camp for. Um, Activities like the story walk or um, for actual overnight camping and such. I think that is part of phase two, isn't it? Overnight camping is not permitted. Okay. Yeah, they just said that on the call we were on right before this call. Okay. So I, I thought um, they, they could do day camp though, right? Uh, to offer that would be yeah day camp but there are several things that need to be done and if it's day camp they need to file with the board of health they don't have a day camp at Kiwani no, no I mean, but right. if the, I have a question if the boy scouts wanted to do a day camp say five days where they brought the kids in to do activities and they left each day is that if they rented space is that considered a day camp how does that it depends. It could be considered a day camp, and then they'd have to file for a camp permits. They have to file with the state, and then they'd also have to do all of the things that are required under the COVID guidance. Okay. And the story walk? The story walk is you can't socially distance on the story walk. As Juvie explained it, the way Juvie explained it, you can't. Which was on the last, I think that was the last selectman's um, meeting? Yeah. Well, no, it was, I don't think, at that meeting, Juvie didn't say they couldn't socially distance. One of the selectmen didn't. Right, the, the, the description that Juvie gave was not socially distancing. And Correct. then the selectman said, yeah, you can't socially distance on that. Well, she would have I, to refine I, her, she would have to refine her organization of, of being able to social distance, like starting at remote places, you know, not all have the same starting place and sort of have a rotating where everybody rotated where they were 12 feet apart to the next station right. on the story walk and such. So that's sort of an easy fix. I'm, I'm pretty sure she could do that. Um, and then she can present it if she wants. So essentially, everything's still up in the air. <laughs> That's what it sounds like to me. Yeah. That's what it sounds like to me. So, Billy, you have all the guidance as far as the camp and stuff. Uh, I believe that's all up to date as far as the orders that have come in from the governor to us. Yeah, I think I just, I think there's like number 38. I think there's a few that I don't have at the moment, but based on the packet that, that you gave me I mean um, you know a, a lot of it obviously has a, a lot of good information for guidance on uh, what we need to do um, I did have a question on order number 33 so the um, phase reopening and it talks about the limitations on outdoor recreational activities um, so in the event if, if we were able to set up because I know there's no shared equipment or anything like that uh, you have to have 12 feet of distancing between if we were to do a small fishing pro and, a, and again would obviously have to get you guys an outline like a fishing program where if we did small sessions and wipe down and sanitize 
the fishing poles between use. Is that something that could possibly occur down by the waterfront? No. Yes, Bill, yeah. Can they use equipment? Um, you can't share equipment. Uh, you know, whatever the person's using is what they use. Uh, um, I don't have that guidance right here with me, but I'll get back to you on that. But, uh, you know, fishing is allowed. But that's also part of another governor's order, too. So we'll have to look that one up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess we'll have to look at that specifically because what I'm thinking is that we are able to offer some sort of fishing program, you know, again, adhering to, you know, less than 10 per group size, the 12 feet apart. Um, the biggest question I had was obviously shared equipment. I mean, the kids would each have their own fishing pole that they'd be using. It was just, would if we go to another session, they would all get wiped down before. Oh, yeah, that's, that's doable. Yeah. Um, so that's, you know, in reading that, they, I'm trying to look at things like that where, again, we can space the kids out, you know, down the wall. Obviously, it said they still have to have, you know, face masks and everything. Um, so, I mean, obviously, if we can check all those boxes, um, you know, I just want to make sure, you know, whatever you guys need from us, if, if that's an avenue that we can go down, you know, it's it's not great, but it's something. And it's at least something that we can put out there. Um, but I, I know, obviously, even with like sports and everything, yeah, you can't do shared equipment. So like baseball and things like that. I mean, obviously, most of what you would do at a camp right now, we're not allowed to do. So, um. well, I think you know, just uh, review it. And any questions, you know, give me a call, and I'm I'll try to. See if we have anything newer than uh, that one there? But uh, okay. You know, we're all, you know, we're here in the office to help you here. Is there any guidance and try to update? It's difficult sometimes because you have to go back to, you know, governor's order number 13 and then jump up to 31 and then over to 35. So, so it takes a little bit to, you know, read everything and, and get it down. So. Oh, yeah. And, and again, like, I, I'm certainly, you know, looking to you guys for guidance. You are, are the, you know, the expert in the one that we have to turn to. It's a state of emergency. It's a health issue. Um, so obviously, you know, I'm going to rely on you and, and support obviously the information you're giving me because, again, it makes sense and it's above all looking to keep the community safe and that's what we got to think about first and foremost. Yeah, so get back to some more questions and whatnot and we can, uh, you know, review the, review the guidelines again, review the orders and, uh, you know, and then that's to, you know, Work it out what's best for the you know the town and the people. So, all right, sounds good. Okay, so um, Diane, you said you might consider opening at a later time. Well, sh should we get more clarification, and should the phase three rules look different, and you know we can make it feasibly doable? Absolutely. I mean, so I, I financially you can cover your cost. Yeah, if we can financially do it, I, I would want to do it. Um, again, it's been what I've asked is that we have a plan in place for those three scenarios. So, okay, we will have a plan in place and um, and just go from whatever we can with the guidance. I mean, once we get clarification on the category of Camp Kiwani, and then once the phase three rules come through and everything else. Okay. That's, that's, so to be, to be determined at a later date, I guess. Because I guess. We, we won't know. Tonight we'll see what the selectmen say as well. Of course, but they, they're not going to be able to make a decision because they don't have the information just like we don't have the information. It's well, really not going to be the end of the month. Well, I mean, we do have the math of it, though. And and again, looking at it, we didn't have any restrictions last year and we did twenty three hundred day passes. We have to more than double that to break even. Well, that's if we kept the day pass at five dollars per person. 
So okay, we if, could if we go to 10, 10 bucks per person, then we still have to do um, 2,500 passes, thereabouts. Okay, it's just something we would have to look at. I, I guess at this point, it means that we will just have to come back together at a later date with more information. Once we get the phase three information, um, then maybe we should discuss it again at that point and find out if it's feasible for um, Primary Coke to be open. I think that sounds reasonable. And I just would like to yeah. pre present what we've talked about here to Board of Selectmen tonight. And as long as everybody is on board, then you know, we'll go with whatever decision everybody can agree on. Right. And then the camp is, I think, it's a separate issue. So, yes. I, because you'll okay. have to figure out what kinds of activities you can do based on uh, the orders that come down and where so, you are. So the Boy Scouts just... Um, I just received a message that the Boy Scouts would like to rent the camp um, July 5th. No overnight, just day camp. Um, I don't know how many days they want to rent it for, but my response was that they would have to talk to the Board of Health and apply for whatever they needed to apply for, just to go to you guys for the um, correct procedure. I don't know, Jill, Teresa? Yes. So if the Boy Scouts were using it for one day, do they have to apply for a camp permit? It depends what they're doing. They would need to contact yeah. the office. It depends on what they're okay. doing. That's what, yeah. that's what she said. She suggested they yeah. contact yeah, the yeah. office, but I didn't hear you or Jill respond, so I wasn't sure. Um, okay, I guess that's it. I don't know that there's anything else we need to talk about. Dennis, are you still hanging in there? I am. I'm here. <laughs> Did you want to add anything? No. It's, what can you do till you get the answers? Right. 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 Nothing at this point. I mean, as right. far and as the cove, as far as the cove, if I had to interpret it by virtue of the fence, that's a confined space. But I, but I'm, you know, it's not my call. We'll have to wait to right. see what the state says. What the state says. Okay. I guess then we're pretty much done. All right. Well, thanks, Arlene. So we Thank you. So I'm going to ask that you make a motion, Dennis. I'll make a motion to adjourn at what time is it? Four. Four forty-nine. Four forty-nine. Four forty-nine. I will second that motion. All in favor, Dennis? Yes. Arlene, yes. Yeah. Okay, we're all set. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. All right, bye. Bye.